All right, so if you're putting together a new PC towards the end of the year or start of next year, then this is definitely something that you'll want to check out. It's less than $1,400, takes up barely any room on your desk, uh, super easy to build in, and has the performance to play pretty much anything. Now, of course, you're not going to be playing 8K or 4K with ray tracing cranked to the max, but for the types of games that most people are playing at like 1440p, medium to high settings, this thing definitely has you covered. So let's talk about the parts, put this thing together, and then talk about the performance. So for the CPU, we're going with the new i5-13600K from Intel. 14 cores in total on this thing, with 6 of those being performance cores, which can boost up to 5.1 GHz. One of the best parts about the 13600K though, is that you can use it with DDR4 memory. So here we've gone with 16 GB of 3600, and that'll only set us back about 50 bucks. You can also use it with pretty affordable motherboards, and here I've gone with the ASRock Z690M ITX AC. For a compact gaming build, this has pretty much everything that you'd need from a motherboard. You've got two M.2 slots, Wi-Fi 6, 2.5 gigabit LAN, and plenty of USB ports. Most importantly though, it has a feature called the BIOS flashback, which is how we're going to update the BIOS and get it up and running with this new CPU. Now for the storage, pretty simple, a one terabyte M.2 stick, which should be enough for most gaming PCs out there, but feel free to add some more if you need it. You can also easily add another M.2 drive down the road, and that will be super easy to access even when the build is complete. Now let's talk about the case. This is the NZXT H1 V2, one of my favorite ITX cases at the moment, and is pretty much perfect for what we're building today. The included 140ml liquid cooler is a nice pair for the 13600K, and the also included 750 watt power supply gives us enough power overhead now and also in the future. And just for a bit of fun, I've painted the panels gray. Just looks a little bit more premium than the standard black or white that the case comes in. I've only used a spray can here though, so the result is a bit inconsistent. The side panel and the back panels look pretty much perfect, but the top panel is just not the best. But back to the build, let's start putting this thing together. And the next thing that we'll need to do is install the mounting hardware for our CPU cooler. Pretty easy to do there, just a mounting bracket that sticks on the back of the motherboard and some threads that go through the other side. At this point we can actually go ahead and install the motherboard into the H1. So the radiator flips out of the way, you can drop that IO shield in, just make sure it's facing the right way, uh, slide the motherboard in, line it up, and then finally secure it with the included screws. So now let's go ahead and plug some stuff in. So first we have our 8-pin CPU connector which you'll find at the top left, and then we have that giant motherboard 24-pin cable over on the right there. And at this point we can probably temporarily remove the memory modules just because they're kind of in the way for these next small connectors. So next we have our USB 3.0 cable, our HD audio cable towards the bottom left, our USB 2.0 cable, our front panel connector at the bottom right, and then our front panel USB-C cable right above that. Of course, if you're using a different motherboard, all of these small connectors are usually in different spots, so just refer to your included manual and that'll point you in the right direction. Next up, we'll need to mount the CPU cooler. It might have the thermal paste pre-applied, and if so, just go ahead and use that. Otherwise, just apply a moderate amount like I've shown here. Then go ahead and mount the cooler as evenly as possible. Now the last few steps here, go ahead and plug in that 3-pin pump header from the AIO. I've used the CPU fan header here, but I'd actually recommend using one of the system fan headers instead. And then finally for the motherboard, plug in that PCIe riser cable, should hear a nice solid click. And that's actually like 95% of the build complete. Now for the GPU, we're going with the AMD RX 6700 XT. Technically this is still a current gen GPU for them since the 7000 series hasn't actually launched yet. And more importantly, we're not likely to see a successor to this one anytime soon. Soon. But yeah, the prices for the 6700 XT in particular are looking really, really good. In the US, there are a few models below that $380 mark, which is $100 below MSRP. With 12 gigabytes of VRAM and really strong performance at 1440p, it's a perfect fit for what we're building here today. The specific card that we've gone with here is the ASUS ROG Strix, and it's a really satisfying fit in the NZXT H1, as you can see. There's a few millimeters of breathing room here and there, which is actually a good thing if you can pick up a larger graphic card 
style model and make use of all of that room, then that's what I'd recommend. From there, we just lift up this little cover right here and grab the two eight pin power cables for the GPU, go ahead and plug those in. And that is all of the hardware completely assembled. And I've built a lot of crazy systems in my time, lots of water cooling stuff, uh, but this is just equally as satisfying. It's just really well put together, really straightforward, great performance, great pricing, and it's in a super dense and optimized package. But now it's time to get this thing actually up and running. The first thing that we need to do is update the BIOS. So just download the latest BIOS from the motherboard page, extract and rename the file to creative.rom and copy that to a blank USB. Then insert that USB into the gray 2.0 port on the back of the motherboard, press and hold the BIOS flashback button and the BIOS flashback will go ahead and do its thing. When the LED stops blinking, that's when you can go ahead and install Windows. And I'm not gonna go into the details on how to do that exactly because I've done it many times before, but basically just create your installation media on a USB, boot up your system and follow the instructions. As for the BIOS changes, of course you'll want to enable XMP for your memory. You'll also wanna change the header that your pump is plugged into to function as DC instead of PWM. And finally, extend the power limit duration for the CPU up to the max limit, which is about 225 seconds for this board. And so after all of that, the build is now up and running. And you know, after building in the NZXTH1 several times now, I'm always so, so surprised at how easy it is to get a build up and running in this case. I mean, it has to be one of the easiest possible PC builds that you can ever do. The hardest thing is really those small connectors, but that's pretty much it. Everything else is super easy. And let's also not mention that there is basically zero cable management that you need to do. And looking at performance, again, pretty crazy considering the price. Very capable frame rates here at 1440p with moderate to high settings. With this kind of performance, you'd ideally want to be pairing the system with a 1440 p 165 hertz monitor or similar i'm actually still a really big fan of the lg 27 gp850 which can overclock up to 180 hertz for just slightly over 300 dollars currently that would be a really great fit now in terms of gpu thermals after an hour of full load the gpu topped out at around 60 c mostly sitting around 56 to 57 and this was with a fairly warm room temperature of 25. the stock fan curve on the 6700 xt is a bit on the louder end though hovering around 1700 rpm i would definitely recommend setting your own fan curve in AMD's control panel or in MSI Afterburner. There I found by targeting a much quieter 1300 RPM, it gets a little bit warmer, but still very nice at around 60 degrees. So definitely recommend setting your own fan curve here, but your experience will vary depending on what specific graphics card you go with. Really, the only thing to be mindful of with this build is the 13600K. If you're gonna be putting it under full load in stuff like rendering and encoding, the 14 cores in total and the potential to pull up to 200 watts, it can get pretty toasty to say the least. One way to overcome this is to set your own power limit in the BIOS to around 160 watts instead, or just be mindful of these all core workloads in the future. When it comes to gaming though, which is what this build does best, uh, CPU temps simply aren't an issue. Through actual gaming loads, I saw the CPU closer to 70 degrees, and realistically, those are really good gaming temps for a compact system. And I mean, if I had a set limit of 1400 bucks to build a gaming rig today, this is honestly what I'd build. It'll barely take you an afternoon to get up and running, and the price to performance is simply unmatched. Now, it is possible to get this build even cheaper than 1400 bucks. I think you can get it down to around the 1100 to $1200 mark realistically, Basically, you would go for the i5-12400 instead of the 13600K that we've got here. There you'll save about 120 bucks. And there's also the option of buying a used GPU instead of a new one that we have here. I've seen 6700 XTs on eBay, for example, sell for around the $300 even mark, which, you know, will save you about 100 bucks. And also, you know, consider your other options as well. 3060 Ti's, 3070s, even 6800 XTs have the possibility of selling for some pretty ridiculous prices. So hopefully you enjoyed the build guide. I think this is a really solid rig for around the $1,400 mark. And, you know, it is using a previous gen GPU, but again, we're not going to see a successor to the 6700 XT probably anytime soon. So if you need to get something up and running, this is a really good option. I'll have the parts listed down below in the description if you kind of want to check pricing and put this thing together. As always, though, a huge thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.